Hello everyone and welcome to another short video on our own devices. I'm Jean Messi and today we are having a look at a really neat piece of military surveying equipment. This little device has the rather cumbersome designation of light target surveying self-eliminated with carrying case for use with range pole. Though from here on, I'll be referring to it simply as a target light. These entered service with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers sometime in the 1960s. The earliest reference I've been able to find to them is from 1966, and were manufactured by Synchro Devices Incorporated, which was founded in Oxford, Michigan in 1934, and remained in business until the 1980s. This device was designed for use in triangular surveying, which is a method for fixing the position of landmarks by taking azimuth or horizontal angle readings using a theodolite or similar instrument from multiple different locations along a fixed baseline. This allows the construction of triangles which can then be solved via basic trigonometry. In the military, this procedure is traditionally performed when setting up an artillery battery. Now, if you've ever spent any time around military equipment or build stale models, you've probably noticed those collapsible red and white striped holes strapped to the hulls of armored vehicles or the trail legs of towed artillery pieces. These serve two main functions, first as simple cleaning rods for maintaining the guns, and second as ranging poles or aiming posts. When setting up a battery, a theodolite-like device known as an aiming circle or director, for example the USM2A2, is first set up ahead and off to one side of the battery. Artillery crews then set up ranging poles on the spots where the artillery pieces will be positioned, and the officer manning the director measures and records the azimuth of each pole. The artillery pieces are then set up as close to the poles as possible, and the crews calibrate their sights relative to the director. This way, when the guns receive a bearing towards a target, they can correct their fire solutions by the appropriate angle. Each artillery piece then independently calibrates its sights, either using a distant landmark like a church steeple or a hill, or by setting up a pair of ranging poles 25 to 50 meters on either side of the gun. Now, it's worth pointing out here that this procedure is only necessary for indirect fire weapons like howitzers or mortars, though you may be asking now, why are they then carried by direct fire weapons like anti-tank guns? Well, in that case, they're typically used just as bore cleaning rods, and it just makes more logistical sense to carry one type of equipment for both roles. Now, Lights like these are used in low visibility conditions such as at night or in fog when the ranging poles may not be clearly visible. So let's have a closer look at this and let me show you how this works. So this comes in a robust metal carrying case with a canvas shoulder strap and on the lid we have a data plate bearing that really long designation and the appropriate army stock numbers. The case is also stenciled with the initials CARC, which stands for Chemical Agent Resistant Coating. And this is a standard type of urethane paint that is mandated for all NATO vehicles and tactical equipment. And it's designed to be very tough and non-porous so it could be easily decontaminated of chemical, biological, and radiological warfare agents. And since it's potentially toxic when inhaled or ingested, Anything coated with it needs to be clearly marked. The target light itself is designed to be mounted on a ranging pole or aiming post, which fits through this round hole in the center. The light is then secured in place by pushing down this locking wedge. The light and pole can then be leveled using this bubble level and aligned with the fire director using these flip-up aperture and notch sights. Cleverly, the rear surface of the rear sight is highly polished, allowing to be used as a mirror to more easily see the bubble level. The light itself is generated by a single incandescent bulb, which is mounted on this removable frame. These two other bulbs are spares and not connected to the circuit. The bulb is powered either internally by four 1.5 volt D-cell batteries stored in these compartments, or by an external battery connected to these terminals, with the brightness being adjustable via this rheostat knob at the back. The light exits through this slit, which prevents light spill and allows the unit to be used under blackout conditions. Similar apertures are often fitted to military vehicle headlights. Finally, turning this knob places one of two filters in front of the aperture, allowing the light's color to be switched between white, red, and green. After the Second World War, armies began making increasing use of collimator sights and later GPS-assisted instruments to lay out and direct artillery fire, though ranging poles are still carried as a backup method. However, those technologies and techniques are far beyond the scope of this video. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope you found that interesting. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time in another video where we'll look at yet more surveying instruments and other fascinating devices just like this one. Until then, I'm Jean Nessier from Our Own Devices. Have a great day.